So basically, I'm going to be doing an alarm system here. Um, it's all going to be wireless Neil stuff. So all I have to do is just put everything in the panel room. They also have a freezer, so I'm going to be connecting that up as well. We'll go and take a look in there. So right here we have an old power series, which while well, you see that I have a Neo um, panel since it's blue, we're going to be replacing it with that. And that's the old previous one. It also had a voice dialer. So I also noticed that they had a whole good set of um, freezer meters here. So we're, we're just going to go and use those as well. So I'm going to go and run them in there. I'm probably going to put up a second can to go and store all my power, backup power for, and we'll run it all into our new Neo system. All right, so as you can see, I finished going and cleaning all the wires, so they're all ready. Down here now is the voice dialer. You'll notice that I went and I labeled them, so I have the incoming phone line, the outgoing phone line, and the trigger. And <clears throat> I'm gonna be now putting it up there. So if you look here, you'll notice that I have two lines. One's going to the telephone, it's gonna be the in and out. And then the second one I have is going to the powers to give it the 12 volts power. And then the green one, you don't need the yellow wire, but the green one goes to your number one. And you don't need a common because all you have to do is just trigger it with a negative, um, with a negative common. So that's what we'll do. Okay, so now I ran all my lines. You can see that I have them all coming in, coming down. I go across and then I come back and I go back up again to keep them straight. I have all my fire lines all here. They're all fine. One is going down, that's gonna be the one that's powering them all because they're all daisy chained from like number six and then they go to five, four, three, two, one to go and power them all for the power. Um, the voice tower is up there. You can see that my line is right here. I have one line coming in and now I have two lines coming up. So it's gonna be going and feeding into um, down here into a bundle. You can see it right here and it goes from outside for the phones into here comes back up here into the voice dialer up there for line seizure then it goes from the voice dialer back down and then it's um pigtailed here and then it goes into the end of the alarm and then from the line seizure of the alarm it goes back out and around and then back out here again and then off to our fax machine wherever that may be since with the Neo system, it's all wireless. Um, this is my wireless transmitter receiver. It's running down to the alarm panel. And I also have a second line running here for a 15, 20 watt siren, just so they have something inside. Okay, so from this point, the Neo system is a wireless system. And this is all my wireless devices. I have already preset and connected up a bunch of door contacts to um, transceivers, you can see number one all the way through seven here for door contacts and I have four motions down here and like I said I got the batteries set them all up and you do it all like the day before so you don't have to worry about it this is my guide so I already went and set all of them up to the right location so now it's just a matter of fastening them all to all the right doors and walls so we'll go from there all right so the wireless one is See that I already have set up, so I'll just get that down just to show you. So basically, you just want to line it up center here. Um, just pop them the lid. If you can't do it easily, you just go and use a small turn on When you get it off, you should be able to just take it off. You'll have your battery. You notice I put um, my zone on there, so it's number 12. Get it all set up. I just use this screw this here and that screw there and they're both just flat heads because it's very tight in there you can't use a pan head or rounded hip screws. So when you put it on, um, the alarm system should be beeping saying that it's not noticing this zone. You need a level to help keep it all straight and when you put it all back on, the beeping should go away. You get a couple of different lights just to kind of show you. Right now you can like keep that beeping and you can just close the lid and you're good to go. After about five minutes, it'll stop beeping, and you won't see any more flashing lights. So here you can see that I had to go and do it on an angle. So you'll just see that I just had to go and take out the two screw holes and do it like that. I put it in the far corner. I put it in the far corner so that um, 
you can get as much maximum view as possible from your angles. So this is about the best you can get out of it. So I'm walking down the hallway. So I'm pretty happy with this. So I'm going to finish it up and put my mo motion in. <laughs> So anyways, I went ahead and I put this one on here, so you just take it, you put it up, place it as flush to the middle as you can here, and you just drill it in. Usually I like to use one drill, just drill the holes, and then I'll use the impactor to go plug in the screws because sometimes they'll go flying off and stuff. So once you've got all that done, you're going to take your magnet and you line it up. So I lined it up here. And I took the center hole, which you might be able to see. And I just want to have, like this is going to have a lot of gap, but I only went about half a centimeter or so. It was not a big deal. And then I just drilled out the bottom hole first. So with that, I'm just going to go put this one on because it's easy. And that's just going to hold in place. Now I can just make sure that it's level and step back. Make sure it all looks good from the distance. It is. So now I'm going to take my drill again. And I'm going to go and go my second hole. Okay. Take my impactor. Plug that one in now. Great. And Usually because sometimes over time these things will rattle out, I want to use one more screw. Three is the magic number, I say. So I'm going to do it on the outside one. There we go. And this will help keep it from shimmying with um, vibration. So there we go. This is all in. And the final part is just calibrating the magnet on the arm. So for that you just unscrew one side, you fill the back here and slide it up as far as you need to and then hold the top counter lock and then you just screw it back and you should be good. Again, trying to keep it all looking pretty. And there we go. So now it's on there good. This is on here, we got lots of play, so you're not going to get no false alarms from kids banging around on that. And now I just got to go and put this on, so basically I'm just going to use a couple of screws and I'm going to set it up like this. You don't really want it down here because you don't want it getting botched up. You don't want it up here because then they complain about it being ugly. But this should be out of the cold and still easy enough for them to service. So I'm going to go and prep for that and then we'll carry on. I think I don't want to take about three tie wraps between this. Basically, you're going to use one to go and hold it like this. Because everything should be done at right angles to keep it clean. So, I'm just going to take one tie wrap. I'm going to use it like this. Buckle it around here. And I'm just going to eyeball it. It doesn't really matter as long as it keeps all the right. Now if I was using um, drill tip screws, this would go faster, but I don't have any either, so. But then you can just drill in your screw and the same step that's drilling the hole. But, not a big deal.
more just for the picking. Fold that. Just gotta go and plug these three off and put on my front cover plate. And this goes good to go. Alright, so now I'm just gonna do some more programming, adding the adding the load temps or the freezers to the alarm panel. So I just want to get a current pull from the alarm panel onto my computer, just so that I know I have everything up to date. And with that, I'm gonna be using a USB um, to serial. And then I'm just going to go up to here and I'm going to plug into here and do a PC link to go and get my data. So basically all you have to do is just make sure to have all your equipment at your PC link. And on the PC link itself, if it ever focuses, let's try here. Come on. One more try. Come on. I've got it close enough. Anyways, there's a little plus arrow on it. You want to make sure the plus side is the first pin, like so, and then you're good. So then from here, we'll just go into programming. So you can see this is how my contacts look like. This is how you look like when you have to do it with the other contact. Panel room. Little wires could have been a bit better there, but that's not really my wires. A door contact. Almost forgot that I have a motion in the corner here. Wireless keypads just outside of the room of the office. I have a keypad at the front. Let's see if I can get a good one on it. So we go star one, my zones. I have wall cooler dairy, wall soda shelf, wall freezer meat shelf, wall freezer food, wall freezer deep, dairy, You have some bypass there. Oh. Had one of the zones bypass there. If you need the bypass the zone, you just hit the star button. B will show up to show it's bypassed. If you have any open zones, which I don't think I do right now, you'll see a little O in the corner. Anyways, I'm all done here. So with these things, sometimes the temperature we we'll get too close to like what temperature is supposed to trigger at. So sometimes you have to go and adjust their thing. So first thing you notice that it's locked. So you have to unlock by pushing the enter button and the alarm silence at the same time. It takes a few attempts and then it unlocks. From there, you go over to the zone and you hit that button. Once that comes up, you're gonna stay on zone two and you just hit enter to go through. You don't wanna change any of this stuff you want to change the high. So if I want to increase the high, I can push up to go and increase it. But I'm going to keep it at negative 12. Um, if it's getting too cool, like it was at that, I feel like it's going to get down to 28. I can lower it down a little bit more and then you can carry on. But I'm going to keep it at 26. And then this is how many minutes it takes before it triggers the alarm. 
and then the alarm system will go off. So if it gets below 26 for like 15 minutes, but then it goes back up again, um, compressors start kicking in and shooting it back into its proper zone, then, or I guess the compressors would stop. But that's all that. And then the last one is energized. That just has to do with the normally open, normally closed contacts. And then you hit enter. And that's how you go and you adjust temperature gauges for these. I'll just show you quickly, but I'm not going to do it. I'm in operate mode. You hit the M button, it turns it off. And then it won't be using the dialer at all. If you hit it again, it's going to wait a second. And then it's going to ask if you want to go into program numbers. If you click one, then it brings here and it'll ask you to go and enter up to four different phone numbers. So if you ever need to change a phone number, you would like hit one, for example, and then you would put in your phone number and then end it with hitting the star button. So like um, you could go star, peak is a four, two second wait. So if you put two P's in front of it, it's a four second wait. So usually I go P, P, then one, the area code, and then the number I wanna dial, and then I'm done with that. When you're done programming the four different codes, you just hit zero to get out of here and you just work your way through the lines again until you're back in live mode. So now I'm back at live mode so we're good to go.